working on is a lot of applications. We're just going to do a quick warm up. I'm going to cover the food you got in knee, straight line bunkai, all right? We're going to use that as part of the warm up. So we're not going to work too hard with that and then we'll progress from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go up the ladder with each kata and we'll pick a piece and then we'll work that particular piece within the context of the kata. Right. Bunkai, of course, is analyzing the technique. What am I doing when I do this move, this move, or whatever move we're doing? All right, feet together. Heels together. Great. Heels. Feet together, hands on the knees. Uh, we're going to work um, from the point where we start with the kick. All right, we're going to start with the kick. So from this position here, Sensei Rick's going to push with the Left hand, I'm blocking and then I'm grabbing. From here, I'm going to kick in and he's going to check me. And I'm falling forward. This is real important to fall forward. From here, the hand that's up comes down, redirects the arm out of the way. I go to punch and he doesn't comply. We'll stop right there. Hey. So start from this position here. You're going to grab. Right? The person doing the kick is doing the kata. He lay checks or ankle checks. I come with the elbow, the hand that's up, redirects, and then from here, he just knocks it back, not complying with the technique. All right, last time. All right, so this is kind of the most difficult part, that, that, that check to the uh, ankle. All right, so from here, make sure you're not kicking the person in the ankle. You're just placing the foot. So application-wise, if the foot was down in front, all right, what I'm doing is I'm placing my foot in that position. From here, the Kazushi would break his balance, and then I could throw. So in, in Judo, they call that Hizuguruma. All right, so Kazushi's here. I'm pulling down and punching at the same time. Last time. Grab, kick, elbow, come down, punch. Stop right there. Work it back and forth. This, um, a lot of times you'll see beginners. Um, where the elbow's up and they block down with the other hand, they punch. If, you, if you're teaching, this is a great tool to get them to understand that sequence. All right? It's sometimes better to see it in application first and then work the technique individually. All right, good. Back and forth with your partners. That hand, right? So I block, I grab, I'm going to hang. So you check, I'm still hanging in Right? Now I move it out of the way. Then you knock that out of the way. Okay. Don't lose. Yeah, don't lose the grip. Okay. Oh, <coughs> You're elbowing. Yeah. <laughs> That's okay. Right. Food you got in you. Kiyosuke. Great. Your. Itch. Knee. Sun. Itch. Knee. Sun. Itch, knee, sun, itch. All right, we'll stop right there. Okay, uh, so let's go from the beginning. Uh, Sensei Rick's going to punch to the head, I'm going to drop back. I counterattack, he punches low, I drop back. He attacks again, I step back, and then we take it right to the point where we just worked. All right, just take it to that point. So, itch. Knee, sun, itch, knee, sun, itch, knee, sun, itch, yeah. That's what we're taking it to right there. Bunkai is an application and analyzing the technique. So everybody has a different range of motion. Um, so when Sensei Charlie is working it, he, he's not making the full, the full uh, block, correct? He's just using the elbow to get the arm out of the way. It's efficient. That, that's what you want. You want to be efficient with your movements. That's why a lot of times when we talk about blocking down, we don't want to start the chamber from up here and then continue down. It's almost like you're cutting the body in half. All right. Again, if uh, if he's if say he's in close grabbing the wrist, and I go to pick the arm up here, what's happening? What, what's happening? If I pick the arm up here, 
exposed. Well, I, can, I guess I get my hand out, or yeah, you're, you're exposed. Yeah, I'm exposed. Right, so, but if he's grabbing the wrist and I cut short, now I'm more efficient with the movement. When you do the last block, right, from here, you grab. From this position here, I'm moving in, moving this out of the way. He's going to drive the point of the shoulder into me, body bumping me, and then I'm coming back with the, the first shoulder. So this would be going back in this direction here, all right? So again, I've, I've cleared this out of the way. He doesn't comply. Drive the shoulder closest that's into your partner. Then I come with the strike, all right? So just watch what happens here. Push the arms down. He's going to continue in with the other side. I step back, and now I do the same exact thing on the opposite side. And then he could body bump me. I drop back. And I finish with the shoot though right before we go into the um, world season. Okay. Great. Your. What do you got in? Itch. Knee. Sun. Itch. Knee. Sun. Itch, knee, sun, chin. Itch, knee, sun. Itch, knee, sun. Itch, knee, sun. She. So from from this the last shoot off, from here he's just pushing the hands down. Now as he comes into grab, I drop back. So from here, bring it back pocket, strike, he backs off. From this position here, I step up one more time. I bring it back, or from right in this position here, if you want to step in and do a takedown, you can. Or if you just want to break the person's balance, just face me one more time that way. All right? when, when I'm back here, all right, if I want to come in and just step to the outside, break the balance, that's all you want to do. Okay, or if you want to come inside, like an inside reef, where, where the foot comes through the center, and again, you're just picking up the leg, breaking the balance. All right, if you want to go down to the ground, um, just make sure you have enough space, you're not throwing your partner down. Okay, so uh, remember, where the foot is pointing, I step it, so if my feet are behind this line, I, when I step, I'm stepping over the line, so this way when I pivot, I'm creating that separation. My hips are aligned in the direction where I'm going. All right? Here we go. Yo. And itch. Knee. It's a face punch. Sun. Itch. Knee. Sun. Itch. Knee. Sun. Sun. Itch. Knee. Sun, itch, knee, sun, itch, knee, sun. All right, take two steps back. With your partners, all right, so analyzing the, the technique, all right, um, this, this is where a lot of people get the word artist, martial artist. This is where you have to be creative. This is where you have to kind of feel comfortable when you're doing the technique yourself. So if you're, if you're not feeling comfortable uh, working with your partner, you would less likely work in, in a confrontation in the street. So the, the initial move when, we, when he comes in, he punches, we're just stepping back. All right, so from this position here, um, if when he comes in, if I want to step outside, kick, come in with a punch, if he, uh, say we're in a grappling situation, he drives the hand down, and I use that same movement to, to break the grip, all right? Uh, again, it's movement. I'm not saying that I'm doing a head block here because he was seizing the wrist. And, and this is where the hikite, the drawing the hand comes back in the pocket. That's why it's so important. And a lot, I see a lot of people on Facebook talking about the hikite. And, and it, it's really simple. It's 
somebody's grabbing you, and as strong as his grip is, I want out of there. Right? And I may not have the strength to pull that arm back, but using my body weight, the mass behind it, and then drawing back and using the movement of a headlock to assist the, 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 the grab, now I'm able to break free. So from this, or even if he's grabbing and I'm hickitating and pulling him into the technique, right? That's another way of looking at it. So with your partner, let's just spend about 10 minutes trying to be creative on just an application for what we call drill down Five okay. minutes. That's it. Okay. All right, Sensei, you want to add anything to that? Or? Uh, no, I like what you're doing. But I will add something to that you mentioned. Okay. All right, where are you? Come back in a second. Okay. This is not a block, but you demonstrate it as a block because that's what the basic fundamental of moving into karate, learning about karate. Everything has to do with your center. And you control the other person's center by controlling your own center. So when you do the Jodan Uke rising block type thing, just as Sensei was showing, with the hikite where you're drawing the person in, is to allow you to get inside the other person's defenses, okay? So when you're coming in, he grabs my arm and I'm moving in, this is where I'm gonna go. But if, as a more advanced person, because you're doing creative skills, learn how to roll your bone into his area, okay? Now, we're not gonna get into the secret you shoot jitsu where you knock the guy out just by touching him. But this is where this starts. It starts by feeling this. With my contact here, what I'm doing is reading his pulse. I'm checking his breathing. Did you know all that? Yeah, he knows that. He doesn't know that. But anyway, but the idea too is when you break out and you're inside here, you set up everything that you need. He can feel it. Okay? So once more, here's my movement here. He can feel my elbow. You can see him rocking a little bit. Right. What I'm doing is actually I'm getting into controlling his center, and as I control his center, and I adjust my body, he just literally collapses. Collapse. Okay. <laughs> okay, so this is what Sensei Fijiani is trying to get you to learn. Everybody's level is going to be a little bit different. So in the beginning levels, it's just a block. When you get a little more experience and you're working with other partners, you're going to find that the people's bodies change. Okay, but the energies and the physical part of movement doesn't. So you learn how to control that person. Jiu-Jitsu people do this all the time. They have to do it. They don't really use the length of the fist or the length of the foot. They work on the inside and they control the center. But most important in Matsubayashi is to be natural. And then the other complaint is, well, that's not Matsubayashi. Nagamini never taught that. No. He never taught it because he didn't really expect it to be as developed as it is today. Right. You're in the fifth generation. The whole world has changed. But what Sensei is teaching you is how to adapt. And what I'm trying to tell you is you adapt by your own physical levels of skill. So you enter into it. You learn about it. You apply it. You see what works. You see what doesn't work. What works for A doesn't always work for B. But as you develop your skills, especially if you're a teacher, you're going to evolve, and that evolution is really what Karate Do is about. Thank you. Hi, Sensei. No more. But again, from this position here, if I'm not using the lower part of my body, go for that punch again. Even if I try to use this hand to kind of come up this way, to block, you see my posture is weak. But again, if he's using that hand, and now I kind of use the lower part of the body, dropping into that, now I step out. Okay? You always want to think of what we do with every single class coming across the floor, that step and punch. Right? But is it a punch? Right? This could be just a redirection of what I want. This is my control. If I step and I drop, Right into jiggle tie. Now I use the transition into the stance itself. Then again, I exit. unless I want to pull a master cannon. <laughs> okay. Right. So again, think think about that position. Right. When I'm in close, even even before, say when you, when you stepped in a little bit. Right. No, step in with your left foot. Right. From here, when he closes that gap, there's, there's a connection here. Right. Me just buckling that leg. 
you know, I can turn in and push off the head, and now I'm out. Okay. So, um, Craig wanted to do a figure four out of the head punch. Let's be clear, when there's a wrist grab, nobody ever just comes up to you and grabs your wrist. It, it just doesn't, I don't think it happens. It could, you never know. Um, but again, if we're, if we're in type, some type of struggle and he's looking to control the wrist, all right, maybe th that's when this appears. So again, from here, let, let's go now along the lines with Sensei Macaron just talked okay. about, contouring to the head. So from this position here, Let's go to the Jodan Uke, which is the technique we're trying to analyze. And then from here, think of going into P the first move of uh, Sensei, do Pinan Nida, please. Sensei, go ahead. Just do the first move, Pinan Nida, go ahead and itch. All right, so from here, I want to contour the head in this position. All right. Then from this position here, if he's still grabbing, this hand's controlling the head. And, and then we'll go, we'll show from here. I'll bring this back, and then I'll throw a knee, and then I'll drive him down this position here, and then come up with an arm bar. I'll do it on the other one as well, so I can say. Okay? So from here, I'm coming up, all right, contouring to the head. From here, I punch through, breaking the grip. Now, you got to remember, this is still in a dangerous position, so i got to get that leg back. From here, I come with the knee, and now I drive him down to the ground. And then I apply the arm bar. Okay, right from there. And, and, and again, some people, you may need to crank this up more towards your, you know, towards the front pack and then apply pressure. All right? But if you feel your opponent, I could feel him right now, and especially if I was down here too, all right? It's the same thing. If, you have, if you're tight in the shoulders, all right, once they apply that pressure, all right, you're going to feel it. Anybody need to see that again? Okay, so we'll do it slow. So from here, the hikite is here. It, it just go, we're going to go slow. All right, so the hikite is here. All right, I contour to the neck, and then I punch through. Again, make sure uh, the elbow is down. You don't want the elbow flared out, because then from here, that right hand, all right, he could strike into the groin, he could grab the leg, all right? So I want to keep this elbow down. I'm switching the feet. I come with a knee, and then I drive him back. Then from here, if I want to crank the shoulder, I apply the pressure, okay? Or I could come back towards me as well. That's just another variation. All right, here, here's the, the strike. Here's the head block, all right? Again, from here, I could bang the knee, contour to the head, I push down. This hand still controlled, so I'm gonna punch through. And again, from here, I'm switching the feet. I'm bringing this leg back. Then I bang him with the knee, and then from here, I drive back. And then from here, apply the pressure forward. Okay, so again, this could look like Pinan Godan going down to the ground. Everybody has this book, right? I, so a, a lot of people, um, you know, they can teach directly from the book. And I, and I have the book on the deck myself. You know, and it's used as a reference. But again, the techniques in the book, years ago I did a seminar, um, anyway, um, I, I did a movement with my heel up, and the sensei was like, you don't do matsubashi. And I'm like, what do you mean I don't do, I mean, you pick your heel up, you pick your heel up. We don't pick our heel up in matsubashi. Just a foolish statement. But, if you're doing any type of combative art, right, you're going to keep your feet flat throughout the confrontation, right? Keeping the feet flat takes away a lot of the principles that we apply in our techniques. You know, the relax relaxation, uh, vibration, rotation. Right? If, my, if my opponent is at this distance, by picking the heel up, turning the hip in, it's very easy for me to make up that technique without moving closer to my opponent, all right? So 
Um, but w when we look at the book, and we, you know, however long we look at this book, Master Nagamini, his hand is going to be in that position. His hand is going to be in that position. His hand is going to be in that position. If we limit it to just what it is, you know, a down block, a head block, you know, knife hand block, then we'll always be limited how we're going to apply it. All right? So if, if I'm using, uh, if, if he's throwing a punch, right, and now I, you know, I use that knife hand strike or I, or I turn it in to, to whatever I'm going to do and it, it kind of applies to a kata, you know, rather than just staying right here. If he grabs the wrist and I use the same move, if you take, if he punches me and you take this picture, right, my hands will always be in this position. If he grabs my wrist and you take this picture, my hands will always be in the position. So, so it's a hard concept to, to grasp, but that's the importance of understanding that it's just movement. Whatever you do standing up, you can do on the ground as well. Right, if, we do, if we do a technique uh, from Wankan, where we come in, uh, right foot forward, left hand in front. Right, if, I'm, if I'm on my back and I'm applying that same movement, right, or my hands are in the same position and now, now I'm using that as a choke. Whether I'm on my back or standing up, if I'm anchoring the elbows, I'm going to apply that movement to, to the technique. Okay? So, but, but that's where the martial artist comes in. That's you. And again, you have to feel comfortable, you know, within your body, within your framework, doing the techniques. Again, if they don't feel comfortable in class, likely you're not going to be able to apply that in a in confrontation in the street. So if we look at this, I, we can say, you know, any, anywhere we have a head block in a kata, right, so we got an edge, so we got a knee, we did that movement where we contour to the neck, pinan sandan. This here will go um, uh, pinan nida. We'll go pinan sandan. So come in with a uh, choke to the uh, to the neck. He's going to come in this way, and we'll we'll use this movement where we come around. So from this position here, we'll take the opposite hand and we'll we'll push it outside the framework of the body, and then we'll just use it for stepping in. Right. He grabs, I push it in this direction, and I step through, right? just for movement. He grabs, right? or if you want it on the neck, create some distance, then push it, and then step through. Okay, so let's just do that. We'll use that as part of a move. Anybody need to see it again? Okay, one more time. Okay, so from here, if the right foot is forward, Right hand is forward. I continue forward with the right foot, and then I come through. Okay. It's in the correct position, because I see a lot of people, when, when they're coming to the backside, they're kind of uncomfortable, like, what's going to happen next? All right? So when he comes in from here, just get enough to the outside position where you could come through. And think of Nahanchi Show. Okay, so when we're here, in the kata, just think of that movement when you can complete it. Okay. Take it to that point. This, when, when I come in here, I'm keeping, I'm keeping this grip. And then again, from here, that would be the hikite, right? And this here would be the strike, right? So I'm not going to let this go. It, if I hit here with an open hand and say, uh, just tap when you feel it. If I hiccitate here and expand my chest, you see how I have an arm bar in there. Or if I turn this out, right, because he, he's locked in right here. So I'm pulling this back here, and this here, I'm using the side of my body to create the pressure on the arm. Okay, so you don't, you don't want to let this go. So if I come through, right, just turn this way, and I let go and he blocks this, all right, now I'm in trouble. Okay, so I'm controlling here, I strike, he blocks, all right, from here I could use or displace the balance of the body, all right, just by keeping him tight into the body. Okay, if you think of kata, even, you know, <clears throat> the foot placement, how we position our feet, 
whether the feet are out 45 or the toes are touching, these all aid in the transition of how we get into the stances. If, if you look at the hand positions, like in Furigati, yeah, Sensei, can you do one Like, again, if there's a tussle, there's a cross grab, a cross grab, cross grab, like this, right? From here, if you see the movement, just go, right? You, you can see how I could use that or apply that. The sense of you probably know the joint lock, right? Yep. Um, so from, from this position here, you know, people say, well, why do you start the carpet that way? I, I don't know what Master Nagamini was thinking, but I could think that maybe he was applying some type of joint lock, you know, to his uh, opponent, you know, or his partner. Or even if he grabbed and I just kind of, even if the hand just kind of passes over for a second in transition, right, there's an application for, from the kata itself. So the, these are ways that you could look at the techniques. And when you look at the technique, and it, like, like I said earlier, my, my student who was having trouble from the elbow and fully got a knee, he would block down, then he would punch with the wrong hand. When he actually did the two-person drill that we work on, now that transition in the kata comes a lot easier to him. So I mean, you were talking about this movement in, uh, in, in, the, oh, yeah, we, we would, in, in the penon kata. We would discover something. Okay, so let, let, why don't you show it? What, whatever I show you, you don't have to agree with me, you know, because you're going to, God forbid, you would be the one applying the techniques in the street. You could say, oh, wow, yeah, that, 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 that's a possibility. But you have to, right, especially as black belts, um, you have to be the one that, that has the techniques to fit your body type, you know, your, your style of moving, um, your, whatever strengths you have, whatever weaknesses you have. That, you're the person dealing with that. So when we view other people doing applications, that's how we get ideas. And, and yes, what Sensei Macaron said is true. You're stealing, you know, you're okay. stealing techniques from your Sensei, right. but your Sensei is stealing techniques yeah. from watching you as well. I, it, it's a, it's an endless cycle, so I just want to say that before you guys. Which grab is it? Um, it was a uh, well, I don't uh, key lock, center lock, whatever you. Yeah, the uh, I stole this from somebody. Um, well, somebody showed it to me, and put his hip around. Oh no, you know what? I'll just get out of it. You gotta hammer lock me. That's what it is. No. Oh, that way. Thank you. Yeah, you can even do the. Thank you. All right, so. What the guy showed me was, and I loved it, he came on, grabbed his hip, and then just stepped through, and ended up locking the other guy up. And when he showed it to me, I just said, <laughs> and it just, it stuck. So it's I, been there ever since. I know it's stupid and simple, but yeah. So I definitely stole that from somebody else. All right, good. All right. All right. So let's go, um, let, let's use that same type of similar movement. Um, maybe we look at it a little bit differently. I actually wouldn't apply this on somebody his size unless right, I control his height. Okay. So again, with some, somebody my height, it, it's a lot easier. Right? I'm just shooting the arm. Uh, I rose about my height. So from here, what I'm doing is shoot. So again, this could be like a, a bicep bump or a ridge hand strike. And then from here, again, that hand that we pull in the pocket would just be used to pull our opponent in. And then from here, I just step out and I use that same twisting motion to take my opponent down to the ground. You don't have to go to the ground. Again, if you just want to get in here, get the fit, and then just break your opponent's balance, you can tell right away. Once you have your opponent's balance broken, they're gone. Okay? So, again, th from this move in the kata as well, you could also look at that, again, as a, as a same side grab, cutting to the outside and using that motion, maybe getting that hand out of the way, and now you can see where we come in with the elbow, and then we follow through with the back fist. So again, if I use this cut, maybe use that elbow to knock it out of the way and then back fist it. Just a different way of approaching.
Okay, so let's do that with your partner. We'll just go around the head. Again, if your opponent is if your opponent is taller than you, just use a kick to control the height of your opponent and then slip the technique in. <clears throat> this is really important, especially if you're going to lock the head. Um, from here, I, again, I probably wouldn't even attempt something like this if the person was low. If somebody's bigger than you, man, you want distance. Right? Matter of fact, even if the person's smaller than you, you want distance. That, that's really important. Right? When that gap's closed, there's a good chance that you could get hurt. But if you're going to apply a technique like that, from here, I'm not going to his strength. Right? He's got a lot of strength here. Right? I'm not going to his strength. He's got a lot of strength here. I want to take this away, so I got to take this thumb and I got to lock it into my body. All right? I got to lock it. If I don't have control of the head, I don't have control of him in his position. It's like um, if uh, just, just turn. If I if I'm going to come in for a choke on him, and I have my hand in this position, especially with somebody this size, I, I'm in big trouble. I, I have to make sure this hand, it's like I'm going to stick my thumb right in my mouth. All right? Once I have this, this controls the head. Once you break the head's balance, the, the body's going. Now I would lock it in. All right? But I would never attempt to choke from this position here because nothing's going to happen. It, ha it has to be really tight. All right? If you're thinking of any type of choke going in, Right? If, you, if you look at this movement in the kata, and I'm coming in this way, I have to be going deep. I can't have any gap in here. If I'm pulling here, nothing's happening. If I come up tight and now I pull here, bang, there's my choke right there. All right? So you have to make sure, even what I did before when I came in, I want my thumbs going in as deep as possible, which sometimes is hard. Right? So we work with a gi, but you've got to think of if somebody had a, a, a hoodie or a business jacket or whatever, a heavy coat during the winter time. You want to you get in real good, and again, even from this position here, if I just grab, I'm pulling this down and trying to force this up. But it has to be tight. So when you're controlling the head, think about if you have it really secure. If it's not secure, you probably don't have the throw. Okay. I, see, I see people like grabbing the, the gi as well. Um, just stay, just put, put two feet. Yeah, it's going to be fine. So the, the line between us is, is like a tipping point where I, I want to have his balance broken in this direction, right? If I'm going to take him here or I'm going to break the balance back, right? That's where I would be stepping over the line here. So some, some of you, um, when you're grabbing, uh, I see you like squeezing, like both elbows are coming in towards one another. You, you want to think of them going out. So if I was just to grab his wrist and pull him in this direction, right? you see how I have the balance broken in that direction. If I was to lift the wrist in this position here and, and then pull, I still have the motion going this direction. If I take this lapel and I turn it in and I drive up, you see and he feels I have a much better fit, all right? So if I pull away from that motion or from, from the movement right there, you can see like the opening in, in pinon cock, right, pinon shoulder. So from here, drop the left leg back, all right? Now keep the hands up, step over, back in, and now look to your left and, and drop. Okay, and you, you can have that back knee a little bent. Think of driving the ball foot into the tatami mat, like you're hammering it. Okay, all right, back up, all right, step over, back in, and then look and turn. So work this with your partner right now. So you, you have your hips aligned. Um, Again, I wouldn't use this on him unless, you know, I brought the height down. But when I back in, I want to be in a position where I could easily lift him and put him down. That's telling me 
that my hips are aligned in the proper position. All right? If I'm struggling to lift them, then my body mechanics are off. All right? um, from this position here, if I stick this foot out and turn all right, and rotate, it, you, you see how I can take them down with that as well. Um, when you're working with different partners also, um, I can also go around the hip, all right, align that hip in there, and then from here, lift them, or I could actually come up under the arm. I want to elongate this, drop, and same thing, just lift. So, but you can feel your hips in there. That's important. With my Put hips. Your hand out. Right. You're still Stay strong in this position. Now. Put your I together. keep your hand here. You now get in your head with you, right? right? Go. But once I break your balance, right? See how your posture is. So that that's really important first. Easy and dark. Combine to try to get somebody to the ground, right? But a drill for alignment. So if you think of just going against the wall, all right, and then stepping out, all right. I'm always aligned. I'm not out here. I need to align my body within the framework of my opponent. Right? And this is where you know, the eyes would turn right? if I throw over the hip or if I do like a, a drop, right? the, head, the eyes are going in the opposite direction. So when you're doing a drill like this, just think of, think of the wall in front of you and just alignment. Alignment is really key to a lot of things. Um, whether you are, you know, I, I say this all the time. Um, you, you'll see a lot of people, when, especially when they go to that first move in Foodie Got an Itch, they, they, they're not in the right position. The hips are not open. Their feet are on the same line. You, you have to think of an imaginary line running through your body. What Sensei Macaron said before about being natural, right? That's the difference, or at least for me, in Matsubashi compared to some other systems of martial arts, is that everything relates to what we do. So if I was going to walk out of this position, it's very easy for me to just step forward. If my foot was turned out, right, I, could, I, could hear, I could feel right, the, the pressure on the inside of the thigh. Right? I would have to rotate that in, and then, and again, the efficiency of the movement is what we want. So if, if the the line is running through the body, if the, the hips are aligned, if I drop the weight, let me do it this way, if I drop the weight back and I drop down, all right, this is my Nikawashi. So again, the, the heel doesn't have to be really high, all right, it's slightly off the ground, all the weight's on the back leg. If I pick up the back heel, my knee breaks in that direction, pick up the lead heel, knees breaking in that direction. And it's the same thing with the Zankuts. If I pick up my heel, my knee's breaking, it's a front stance. If the foot is pointed out and I pick up the heel, it's breaking a different direction. So alignment is really key. The more aligned you are when you are facing off with somebody, the, the better you are balanced, the better you will be in a position to execute those techniques. But if the alignment is off, um, then you're going to have some weaknesses, and, that, and that's going to show up, especially when you try to apply the movement. All right? when, when I'm doing a, a movement like this, right, and I'm here, I want to still think of pulling this in the direction where his fingers are pointing, and at the same time I'm punching with this hand. This way I'm, I'm using it to assist me to get him down to the ground. It, it, It'd be more efficient rather than just come back up. Just having his hand here. See, I can't get him around this way. Or I can't, I could probably get him around here a little easier, but when I using both arms and I twist, there he goes. Alright, so think of hick always think of hickey tay and punch. Hickey tay and punch. Even when I'm here. Alright, we're gripped up. Hickete and punch. Right? This is what I'm looking to do with my opponent. Once I displace his balance, I'm in control. So if, if you notice his back, the alignment is straight. Once I pull with the left hand towards me, it changes a little bit. 
Once I punch with the right hand, it changes more, right? But if I do it at the same time, now I step out. Now I'm in a different position. Just try that slow. Grip up and just think of the punch. He does it to me. You're just trying to get the other person off back. Go, 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 go. That's it. If I break the balance, however I'm going to break it, let me come this way. Right? If, I, if I step in this way, you see, you see my posture, right? I got to think of going in here, right? One motion, as I, as I hit your tank and turn, I'm already in transition going behind. So your posture is, is real important. You think of being like up on the ball of the, of the foot rather than being on the heels. If you're on the heels, right, once I do that kazushi, I'm off balance, right? But if I'm on the balls of the feet, bang, right, I go right into the technique. From here, we're just going to establish outside position on our opponent. So uh, Sensei Dillon's going to step in with the right hand, and he's going to push it. This is what he's looking to achieve. He's stepping in, pushing. As he steps in, I step off. Do, do it really slow. The hand on that side of the body is going to come up first and redirect it. The opposite hand is coming up and underneath. All right? And then from here, this, this is my guard. When he pushes with the other hand, this is what he's looking to do. All right? From here, the hand out in front redirects it, and I get to the outside position of the body as well. He pushes me, redirect it, outside position. He pushes, hand out in front, redirects it, outside position. Outside position. Outside position. Outside position. All right, one more time, come back this way. All right, he goes to push. And all I'm doing, so I could go immediately with a technique, say, to the eyes, is keeping the hands open. All right, he goes to push. Right? Immediately, I could go to the eyes if he wants to advance. He goes to push, immediately to the eyes. Already okay. pushes with the right hand, he's hitting my left shoulder. All right, do it again. He's pushing me this way. The hand on that side of the body redirects it. All right, when he redirects it, I'm kind of going back because I want to create distance, so now I can kick. All right? So from here, he pushes, I'm back, I'm at a distance where I can kick. He pushes, I'm back, I'm at a distance where I can kick. I don't want to be too close right now. Remember, self-defense is creating distance. But again, you want to use your distance to your advantage. So again, if I kick him low, he drops, now I can step in, or I can step in and move behind. There's a lot of different options from that position. When, when she pushes, and I'm here, and now I grab. All right, this kind of changes everything. All right, so from here, again, when my hands are in this position, especially if the person's bigger than me, I could push off and I'm looking to exit. All right, so from here, if I'm going to grab, maybe it, it's something else. But for right now, all right, two different ways of applying it. All right, just understand one may just be to, you know, keep those hands open. A lot of times, in, in a, in a, even in our style, when we look at the techniques, all the hands are closed in the blocks. But if you, if you go to Okinawa and you train with Tamaki Sensei and Tokushiki, everything, when, when she's pushing and I'm blocking, it's almost like, you know, it, it's relaxed where, you know, I have different options of what I want to do when I go with my techniques. Right? Point of impact, this should be tight, but then relax again. Real important. So right now, the hands are just open. Sensei Art is going to come. He's going to choke to the right. He's going right to the neck. From this position here, all right, do it again. All right, I'm going outside position, and then I'm going to strike behind the arm. Okay. I said he comes with the other side. Outside position, strike behind the arm. So if he's grabbing here, 
I would oh. want to secure, right? So if I, if I had him in this position here and I take this foot and say I want to step into his Zankutsu, right, then I have the, the ability to do that. Just, just check your position. When, when he comes in, one, two, and I'm here, all right, if, if, if I'm too far in front of him, all right, very easy for him to bend the elbow in towards the body, all right? If I'm in a position where I have the ability to get energy going in that direction, pulling back this direction, and then I can step into Zankutsu, you see where I can take it, all right? So you want to be in a position where you can move your opponent, right? I want to try to keep his arm as high as I can. Because if, if it goes low, I'm, I'm going to step back by you. If I go to step back, you see how it just slides off. But from here, if I can keep the elbow in here, and now when I step back, you see how That's now exactly I can come. Okay. Yeah. Right? I want to try to keep his arm as high as I can. Because if, if it goes low, I'm, I'm going to step back by you. If I go to step back, you see how it just slides off. But from here, if I can keep the elbow in here, and now when I step back, you see how That's now exactly I can come. Talking. Okay. Yeah. So it's that the pull. Yeah, and that rotation of the hip. Nice. From here, when he comes, I'm outside position. But then I'm going to use both hands. If you want to come with the strike, you can. But I'm going to use both hands to come inside posi position. And now I'm bringing this hand back to me. Right, so I was outside, now I'm inside position. So I'll do it slow again. He comes here, I'm outside. Think of both hands going over, but you're, you're staying in contact. You're not letting go. Both hands are going to ride him as you move. You got to keep that hand up. Right. You got it. All right, so I'm here. I'm bringing these back to me. So from here, I got a knee strike. I could step behind, take him down. So you're working from the outside in. Okay, who needs to see that again? Okay, turn this way. All right, he comes, one, two. All right, I can strike, but the hand, this hand's controlling. The hand that's closer to him goes over, and I redirect the arm out of the way, and I come back in. All right, so turn this way. Here's where I am right here. Moving in slow. This hand over. I think what Sensei Macaron said earlier about contouring to the neck, contouring to the arm as you move in. And the other person, just keep that hand up in the check position so you don't get hit. Right? And then see where your alignment is. Right? You can bang the leg or step behind. Right? This has to be tight to the body. Right? Think of taking this hand and putting it on your right shoulder. Two hands show. Here, arms to the side, bang, head back. Alright, two hand choke. Alright, we'll bring it around. So when you come in, I'm here, or come in towards the neck, I'm here, I bring it around, and now just move in. Alright, so if you're thinking of, you know, any of these movements in Asai or Pusan Ku. Alright, with your point. Two hand choke. Here, all right, I go to bring the arms around. Before I headbutt, his hands are up. I bring the hands down, body bump. Okay, so watch again. Here, bring, and again, I don't want to go outside the framework of the body, right, because then I'm just exposing, all right? So I just kind of keep it tight. I come around, I go to hit him with the headbutt. Now I put, put the arms down. Realistically, if I got the arms down, I would exit. But, but this is all drilling back and forth, all right? Kata is like a, a boxer hitting a speed bag. It's not going to do this in the ring, all right? But the kata helps us understand movement that we're doing within the kata. Uh, when we get back to the starting point, it helps us with our consistency and our stances from moving to the left, to the right, or whatever direction you're moving. So when you're working a drill back and forth, all right, it, it's to help create movement, uh, understanding you know, 
where you may be as far as, you know, the distance that you need. Of course, if I'm, if I'm back here and I clear the arms, I'm not going back inside with a body bump. That just doesn't make sense. All right, so one more time. Hands up, all right? He covers, I drop back, and again, there's that movement again we see in the cotton sometimes. You know, when we do a chest block, we clear the hands, and as long as we're in position, we can just come in with a body bump, all right? And then I'll attack him back and forth. Um, so today was really all about application and being kind, just trying to bring a little sense of uh, understanding to what we're doing how much above and beyond it is what we do. Um, so, who remembers the first move we worked on? Forget this. Uh, forget the knee. Forget the knee. If you could just walk, like I always say, if you could walk away from a seminar with, with just one understanding, you know, whether it's posture, um, separation, Whatever it is, you walk away with one thing. Then when you put down another style, you put your style down. Yeah. Because it's all the same stuff. How, does Taekwondo do this? Right? Does Ninjutsu do this? Yeah. But again, if we just limit it to just a headlock, then you're limited in your technique. You want to expand. Right? You want to be creative in what you're doing with each and every movement. Any, any questions? Um, basically, keep, keep an open mind when it comes to your training. Because uh, one of the things that we have to realize is that we're all human beings. And we're, uh, we have our limitations. So even with the great masters that have developed these arts, they're just men and women. They're just people. So no one is perfect. And the whole idea is to keep polishing the stone. So if you look at, you know, martial arts is no different than any other art or any other science. If you look at it in a scientific manner, which you should, right, you should understand that, I mean, if you look at the beginning of the 20th century, we were still riding horses and carriages. Within the 20th century, we put a man on the moon. So we build on our predecessors. Your martial arts, no different. And people will come out and say, well, that's not Masubashi, or that's not this, that's not that. You know, I mean, it, it is what it is. It may not be the Masubashi that they learned, but each of us had our own experiences with many of the senior masters of the style, and especially if you cross-train. Because, again, if when you cross-train, it opens up your mind to many other different things. Like you would hear many senior instructors tell you in Masubashi, elbows must be close to the body. Relax your shoulders, right? Now you go to a Tai Chi instructor and he's telling you, relax your shoulders. Make your shoulder a part of your hip. Create that rod. See, these are the things that you have to be looking for. You have to be looking at, everybody looks at the differences. Well, that person looks different than me. Who cares? We're all human beings. Right? So your martial arts, and if you look at a certain principle, and that's the thing with principle, your training must be principle based. So what you have to do is you have to look at the principles of all these different arts, and guess what you're going to find out? They're all the same. They're all the same. They're just taught differently, and they have different nomenclature. That's it. Is it not style better? <laughs> well, you know what? It's better for me. Matsubashi is better for me. I like the natural. I, I don't. I just had a student in here, you know, in a, in a Zenku Tsudachi, and I'm like, I don't want to do that. I don't want. To. Not that it's wrong. Not, look, Shotokan came from. From where? Kaju. Oh, Funakoshi. No, Shotokan. Funakoshi was a Shorinru stylist, right? He was from Shur. That's right. Before Matsubashi was Matsubashi, it was Shorinru. Right. Right. Master Nagamini created Matsubashi. Right. I mean, if it, I mean, if somebody, if you want to go out and create your own style, go for it. You can do it. Like since they said, it's it's another human that created. But I like the principles in Matsubashi with the highest stances. I. Right? 
the, the, the alignment, using the natural movements, the breath is a natural way of breathing. So for me, yes, it's the best style. For somebody else, it may not be the best style. And, and that's what you have to concern yourself with. Don't get caught up in this style is better than that style. Whatever is best for you, that's the best style. That's it. It, it, it really doesn't matter. But uh, again, Master Nagamini took pieces from other people and put together and created Matsubashi Ru. His 18 katas and the seven yakuso kumites were by influences of other people. He stole from those people, took these katas and, and placed them where he put them in, in the syllabus. And, and that's, that's, that's what we have. But when people say you cannot fight or use, you know, the movements that we do in the kata to protect yourself, I, I, I totally disagree with that. And that video that I was talking about earlier it, it is a good, uh, a good eye opener for, for people to say, right? You got to question yourself. Why, why do we punch like this? Why, would I ever be in the street stepping and punching somebody? No, it just doesn't make sense. And then there's instructors that said, my style, my classes haven't changed in 30 or 40 years. Well, okay. All right. That works best for them.